I'm wearing a hat because I think I'm on about third day here. You would think being at home, I would have more time to do stuff, but I'm finding myself hibernating and spending a lot of time sleeping. I think I slept 10 hours last few nights. Last night, not because of the early morning meeting this morning, but then I got back into bed and the cat is actually still in bed. So it's been driving me crazy that I can't make the bed until she is up and moving. I don't know if she's feeling well. She didn't finish her breakfast, which is very unlike her. Um, but also she could have just been weirded out by the fact that I got up before her breakfast. Um, she has a little automatic machine. So before the machine went off and gave her breakfast and she was like, what was going on? What's, what's happening? Um, but yeah, then we got back in bed and um, she is still there <laughs> and it's noon. Hey guys, happy vlogmas. my 5 a.m. review call. Um, so I was not the only person in 5 a.m. time zone actually. We have got a global solutions director in Chicago who called in and he really, he said that he's got um, project work that he has to work on and that he needed some time when everybody else was asleep. So he's getting started right now. <laughs> oh my God, I still look like a mess. Um, uh, so he was like, this is great. Wake up early, do the call do some of my project work before everybody else wakes up. Um, so he was on and the person from Singapore was on. So it was 10 PM his time. Person from Melbourne was on. So it was 9, 9 PM her time. And then someone from uh, Dubai. And so she, she's a nine hour difference. It's interesting to have like people all across the globe on this one. And these two ideas were pretty, um, they're actually similar in the way that they had presented the ideas, um, that they wanted to do some like market research and they've got this thing that they want to do. Um, the one, the one was biomimicry and one was, um, more like a, an in between the construction and asset management life cycle for our clients. Um, but we'll, uh, there's a little bit of probably talking with the team and understanding like what exactly they want to do and, and how they have in um, mind to commercialize it and making sure that they're aware of some of the other tools that we already have that does some of this. Um, or, you know, the other you know, projects and things that we've done biomimicry on before. Um, yeah, so it was an interesting review. It is 5.30 a.m. We got out a couple minutes early. <laughs> so I... Like in that kind of a wake spot where I can't decide if I just want to stay up and work a little bit more or if I want to go get back in my warm bed. So I am going to jump in the shower. I just got off a construction meeting to review construction progress. I took a half hour break this morning to walk down the down and get a taco for breakfast. And I was talking to um, my friend on the phone, my bestie, catching up with her and everything that's happening with her and her life. and. Um, she was telling me all about the, the, there was a mountain lion that was shot in, in Dallas that, um, people went to go hunt because they had, I guess, incorrectly thought that this mountain lion had killed somebody, but it was just how, um, it was portrayed in the media and not like what actually happened. And so then somebody shot him. And so, yeah. Um, and so she's telling me about that and we we're talking about life. Um, I was telling her about my crazy dreams, <laughs> but yeah, lots of crazy dreams. I remember when the pandemic started and everyone was having so many crazy dreams and they were all talking about it at work and that was fun. Um, but yeah, I was on a, I was just listening into a presentation with some of our regional, uh, I guess, operations leads, you would call them. They're talking about global integrated delivery and working across and, um, you know, across different countries. I was like, I just did this. this. Yeah, I've got an interview this afternoon at one. So I'm gonna jump in the shower and take probably like a half an hour lunch just because I took off time this morning. And um, yeah, get ready. We're trying to hire somebody to help out with some field work. And so I've got a few interviews lined up and then um, we'll make a decision, which it's more difficult now than it has been in the past to hire people 
just because of COVID and because of uh, the situ situation. So I think whereas a year ago, we couldn't hire people fast enough. We're a little bit more hesitant to hire now, but my projects are still going on. So I still need to hire people. There's just um, more sign offs and things that need to happen. And we probably moved a little bit too fast on this one and opened up the requisition before getting all the right people um, signed off on it. But it's a pretty important position. And I don't, because the person's doing going to be on site, they're going to be uh, billable. So they'll be on a client project and um, they'll, you know, there's, there'll be a gross margin associated with each of their project hours. And since they're all project hours, um, it is a good business decision to go forward. And knowing that we kind of just opened up the rec without um, necessarily going and getting all the right approvals. So I think somebody um, got a, not a talking to, but somebody was told that like, nah, you probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> um, but anyway, I think I'm going to be, I'm the hiring manager and which I don't know what that entails. I think that's just me on my name on the requisition. And I am talking to the candidates and gonna you know describe the position to them and see if they're still interested in it because it is kind of a unique position which is why we can't find anybody who already works for us that wants to fill it <laughs> um because they'll be out on site um all the time and yeah so well there were one person that was on the interview list that we reached out to and apparently they already accepted a job with a different company <laughs> so i know other people are hiring too I, we were a little i, I think the, the hr person was like that's weird they just put in an application with us last week <laughs> but um yeah i guess there's no way for them to check in and, and say i don't know if there is i assume there's not a way for them to check in and be like hey i'm accepting this other offer here so yeah i get to interview a few people make a decision um before we've got a lot it's going to get quiet in the next couple of weeks but right now we got a lot going on on site and next year we definitely will and so yeah it's um it's been okay in terms of workload for us um or at least on my projects and hopefully we have a decision about another project that i'm on that um we've delivered a 30 percent deliverable and the client was still making a decision on if they want to go forward this way or if they want to, you know, postpone it until they have more money and can afford a, you know, a more robust solution than what they have money to afford right now and how that works with permitting and legal and, um, like their PR and everybody else that has to have a say environmental, uh, that's how I say legal. Yeah. Legal. And so, yeah, anyway, we're waiting on a decision on that project. And so I don't know if that's going to go forward, if it's going to be kind of the same scope that it went forward before or a totally different scope, something super reduced, um, some, which looks more of like an interim solution until they have more money or, um, if they're just gonna, I, I don't think they'll bite the bullet and, and pay for a robust solution now. They just don't have the money to do it. And that's, that's kind of how it works sometimes with these, with, the um, governmental clients. Um, as much as it makes more sense financially to go ahead and do it, you just can't find the funding, so you can't do it. <laughs> um, and it's kind of, you know, what it's like working within, um, regulations and legislation and rules and the way you know the, they have you have to have money to pay for something <laughs> so um yeah lots of things up in the air and moving and uh not a whole lot else going on i i was telling my friend this morning like i think my vlog messes are really boring <laughs> like there's not a whole lot going on except for work and me just sleeping 10 hours a night um and i haven't even been working out like i normally do most days so it, i really am in hibernation. <laughs> I thought I would show you this. This is a design for a grade control structure and a stream. And so this right here is the grade control control structure. And so basically, if you've got a lot of water that rushes down into a creek, it will, I'm sorry, actually the water's coming this way. Um, it will keep a lot of water uh, it basically dams up the water and so you've got a flat surface of water going upstream from this um from this point and you can imagine this is kind of a slope downwards and so you've got water um from this height all the way up to upstream where um where that would you know where it kind of equalizes out profile which is the side view you can see we've got two little grade control structures and so water will will stay from this surface all the way there that's how it's designed and um, from this surface and then back up the slope.
here's an example of what the vessel looks like. So fiber encapsulated sort of lift. Um, this is, yeah, don't worry about that. So basically you've got your, your creek. So this is half of it. Imagine it is, it has the other half over there. You've got your creek with the, with the rock. We've got the, um, there's, these are the lifts here. There's four of them. They've got some burlap or however we design this. Um, a Rosen control brick blanket is what we're calling it here. Um, we've got the brush layer, which are the twigs that come out or live cuttings, they call them. We've got some stakes. There's some live stakes and some dead stakes. So the live stakes have the little plants on the top. Dead stakes are just wood, um, compacted with fill. And so this is all, you know, very specifically designed for the slope and for the velocity of water that we expect to come down the slope and to come across, um, through this section down the creek. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what it looks like. And then they did add in, this was not in the last version of this design, uh, or last package, but we did add in how it gets tied in. So it's very important on Fessel that you tie it in right. Otherwise it'll just, you know, when rain comes in, water's coming this way. If it isn't tied in, water can get underneath and just pull this up and rip the whole thing downstream. So it's gotta be this really important spot there. So I did the interview while I <laughs> back up. I didn't do the interview. I signed into the meeting and our senior engineer signed in as well. And the person we were interviewing didn't show up, which I guess they emailed our HR person right beforehand and said that they weren't gonna make it and we're rescheduling for Friday. But nobody told us that. So we had a grand old conversation talking about groundwater modeling and things we need to do in the project and kind of the workload for some of the staff that we have um, on the project. Cause he's building out the geotechnical team and I am the PM, so I'm hiring them for my project. So we kind of work together. Um, though neither of us are direct supervisors, which is, um, I, I think what's frustrating for him because he's trying to, to be a supervisor, but not step on their actual supervisor's toes, even though he's been asked to like basically fill this role. Um, so we had a grand old conversation, but we didn't get to interview that guy for this role. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know if, yeah, if there's a tip here, it's try to tell your HR person if you're not going to make it more than an hour beforehand. Otherwise, they don't necessarily tell the actual hiring people who would be like making the decisions. And I mean, it's not like we're going to hold it against him, but it certainly doesn't look great for him that he, that we like were there waiting for him and he didn't show up. <laughs> so that's how the interview went today. We've got a couple more this week, and this one rescheduled for Friday. Um, let's see what else. I had a the review meeting. We had another review meeting. Actually, had two more review meetings, and both of them were really good conversations. One about design automation and kind of the strategy for my company um, with design automation, and the other one was a transportation centric review meeting. And we we reviewed an idea about automated vehicles and um, being able to help like our clients actual like questions to us with some sort of modeling. Um, so basically they have a question of like, do we add in an extra lane um, for automated vehicles? Kind of how we have like high occupancy vehicles. Would you have an automated vehicle lane? Or um, like how will it work with people having automated vehicles on the roads where are there are people that aren't driving with automated vehicles? Um, because we're gonna have this hybrid situation theoretically, that they would, we would have, you know, the same roads we have right now. Some people are driving their cars, but there's just automated vehicles like dispersed within um, the cars right now. And obviously it's not going to follow this like ideal perfect model. And so we've got to be able to answer our clients' questions about like how this actually is going to affect traffic and what the best way to design it is. And so it's more of a transportation planning than, um, than say a highways a problem. So that's, um, yeah, that's how the review meetings went. They're good. Um, but it is uh, so almost seven o'clock and I am still waiting on some changes to the design, which I'm going to seal. I, I review it and, um, I'm the, the engineer of record. So my seal goes on it. And I noticed as I was sealing them that we were missing some notes on one of the pages about, uh, groundwater seepage into the area. So waiting on some revisions to that. 
um, from the person who's leading the task. You know, she's coordinating with the CAD people um, and some of our other designers. And so there's a lot of people to coordinate at, you know, 7 p.m. our time. A lot of them are on West Coast, so it's actually not quite five there. Um, and it'll make it a little bit easier that it's still their work day. But yeah, doing a late night tonight, which is good I slept in this morning because I seem to have lots of energy right now. <laughs>